Hi, kiddos. Here's the spiral review for spiral 18. We're going to start off with rational expressions. Uh, this is the last time that we see this topic. Uh, the ones that are marked with V are the ones that I'll be solving out for us. Uh, looking at number two, my first step is always going to be factoring the top. I see a 3 and an x I can take out of both of these. And when I do that, we get 3x and then x squared minus 4. And that's kind of cool. Uh, I can go a little bit further with that because x squared minus 4 I can factor using difference of squares into x minus 2 and x plus 2. For the bottom, I'm looking for things that uh, multiply to 18 and add up to 11 since we have a 1 in front here. Uh, and that's going to be an x plus 2 and an x plus 9. These 9 and 2 multiply to 18 and add up to 11. Okay, let's rewrite this. So we got that 3x and then we got an x minus 2 and an x plus 2. On the bottom we have x plus 2 and x plus 9. All right, once we have factored, we got to find some excluded values. We're going to base those on the bottom. x plus 2 cannot equal 0, which means that x cannot equal negative 2. Uh, and then we've got x plus 9, which also cannot equal 0, which means that x cannot equal negative 9. Those are our excluded values. Finally, we come to canceling. I'm looking for things that are the same in the top and the bottom. I've got an x plus 2 in both, leaving me with a final answer of 3x times x minus 2. And on the bottom, we just have x plus 9. Uh, that leads me to number 5, which is division. I'm going to start out exactly the same way and do some factoring. Uh, top left is going to end up factoring into 3 times x minus 3. The top right is not going to factor at all, so I'm just going to rewrite that as 3. And it looks like uh, the bottom left is going to be kind of similar to what we had in the previous page, where we can take a 4 out at first, and then we get x squared minus 4. And when we do that, uh, we end up getting uh, x plus 2 and x minus 2. Uh, that's going to leave me with a final fraction on the left of 3 times x minus 3. And on the bottom, 4 times x plus 2, x minus 2. I'm not going to cancel anything yet. Nothing will cancel anyway. But I want to make sure I get everything down before I start to mess around with stuff. Uh, okay, then looking at the bottom of this one. We can take a 4 out of all three of those pieces. That would leave us with x squared minus 4x and plus 4. And by golly, the inside part of that looks factorable, and in fact it is. Uh, it's going to factor into x minus 2 and x minus 2. Okay, that gives us a second fraction of 3 over... 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. Let's find some excluded values. Those are based on the bottom. So we've got x plus 2, which means that x cannot equal negative 2. That would make the bottom 0. We've got x minus 2, and that means that x cannot equal 2. That would make the bottom 0. And you might notice that those are the same two things that are on the right side, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, we found our excluded values. Let's do some simplifying. First of all, I see this division. I'm going to make that multiplication. Multiply by the reciprocal. You guys tend to like calling this keep change flip, and that's fine. So that would be 4x minus 2, and x minus 2 is now on top, with a 3 on the bottom. I would have to check for excluded values here, but this is just a constant in the bottom, so I don't need to worry about checking again. Uh, and then on the other side, we've got 3 and x minus 3. We've got 4x plus 2 and x minus 2. Let's look for things to cancel. Uh, first thing I notice is that I've got a 3 on the top and on the bottom. Bada bing, those are gone. Uh, I've got an x minus 2 on the top and on the bottom. Those are gone. I can't cancel out that third one. Uh, and then I've got a 4 on the top and on the bottom, and those are gone as well. That leaves us with a final answer of 
x minus 3 times x minus 2. And then on the bottom, we've just got the x plus 2. At this point, you are done. For our next part, we've got solving rational equations. There are a lot of similarities with what we just did. Uh, we've got to find some factoring stuff and some excluded values. Here, however, these are mostly going to have addition as part of that, so we've got to do some common denominators as well. Uh, first fraction, I can take a 2 out of the bottom, leaving me with 2 times x minus 3. I'm going to leave some space in case I need some common denominator stuff. Second fraction, x squared minus 9, I can do as x plus 3 and x minus 3. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of space in case I need to become denominator stuff. And the last fraction, we've got 3 over x plus 3. Uh, I don't need to factor anything. Everything there is already factored as much as we can. Uh, for the next part, I'm going to find some common denominators. Uh, first thing I'm going to look at is the 2 that's in this denominator. My second fraction doesn't have that, so I'm going to do times 2 and times 2. And my third fraction also doesn't have that. Uh, one of the things I noticed on the last spiral was not using this third fraction, but you got to do all fractions to have the same denominator. Uh, okay, let's look at our first fraction. We got x minus 3. We got that in our second one, so we're good. We do not have that in our third one, so we have to do that as well. So x minus 3. I like that I wrote 2 instead. Uh, and x minus 3 up here. Okay, uh, and then let's look at x plus 3. This one doesn't have that. So I'm going to multiply that up here. Uh, this one does, so we're actually, okay, I like how I underlined the wrong thing over there. That's weird. Uh, so now we've got x plus 3 in all 3, 2 in all 3, and x minus 3 in all 3, which means we can eliminate all of our denominators at the same time. That would leave me with 1 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, and here we've got 3 times 2, which is 6. Distributed would give us 6x minus 18. I'm going to add 18 to the other side, where we have 7 once I combine those. Uh, so if we add 18, we're going to have 25 on the left side. If I minus x from both sides, we get 5x. We get 5 is equal to x when we divide by 5. Uh, and I did not check extraneous solutions at the beginning. Sorry, I did not check excluded values at the beginning. But that would be x minus 3 and x plus 3. So x cannot be 3 and x cannot be negative 3. Since that is neither of those, we are okay. The other video problem is number 7. Here we've got x over 2 plus 2 over x is equal to 2. Uh, one thing I'm going to do before I begin this is turn this into a 2 over 1, just so I recognize that's a fraction. Uh, nothing to factor here, which is nice, and I've got one excluded value. x cannot be 0 as a result of this problem. Okay, uh, first thing, I've underlined x, so I might as well do this is times x over x. Um, and I also have to do this last one as x over x as well. All uh, right, let's look at the green stuff, which is not, not actually green here until I put it in there. So we're going to have 2. This one needs times 2, and this one needs times 2 as well. All right, all three denominators are now the same. Let's cross those guys out. We've got x squared, and then plus 4 is equal to 4x. When I bring everything to one side, we get x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. By golly, that looks factorable. In fact, it is x minus 2. And x minus 2 are the two things that multiply to 4 and add up to negative 4. Uh, and finishing solving this, we get x is equal to 2 for both of these. Since 2 is not 0, we are OK. All right, next up we're doing number 11. Here we've got the mother function for y is equal to the square root of x, and you're asked to do some transformations. In fact, we're asked to do a whole bunch of transformations here. Uh, I'm going to find my horizontal and vertical flips first. Uh, I've got a negative out front. That means I'm going to be flipping down. 
and I've got a negative on the inside. Uh, that means the shape of my graph, instead of going up and to the right, is going to be going down to the left. So it's flipping both ways. Uh, now that I've found that, let's find the vertex, which starts at 0, 0. It's going to be going right 1. I'm just going to do this as an arrow. And it's going to be going up 4. So from 0, 0, going right 1, up 4. And that's my point. And then finally, I'm going to use this minus 3, uh, which means I'm going to be going down 3 over 1. But to get this shape, I've got to go down 3 and back 1. So we have a graph that looks something like this. For the domain, uh, we don't have a starting point. This time we have an ending point, And this is at 1, 4. Uh, so x is going to be less than 4. In fact, it's less than or equal to 4. If you'd prefer the notation using uh, intervals, that'd be negative infinity to 4. Uh, but all you have to do is talk about x being less than 4. Similarly, the range, and I like how I wrote 4, but that's actually 1. Oof! It's because 1 is the x value there. So the range is going down from 4. So we're talking about y and 4. And if y is less than or equal to 4, that's when we go down. Here, the range would be negative infinity to 4. Uh, I didn't mark either of these as video problems, but I'll do number 12. Uh, here we have a radical already by itself. Let's square both sides. And by the way, since their x is being squared, we are going to have to check for extraneous solutions. That gives us x squared is equal to x plus 2. Bring everything over to one side. We get x squared minus x minus 2. And that's going to factor nicely for us. By the way, that's equal to 0. That's going to factor into x minus 2 and x plus 1, which gives us x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 1 as our answers. If I plug 2 in, we get 2 is equal to the square root of 2 plus 2, which means that 2 is equal to 2. We're good. If I plug negative 1 in, we get negative 1 is equal to the square root of negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 is equal to the square root of 1, which is not true. Negative 1 is extraneous. Therefore, x equals 2 is our only answer. You do have to show that you got that answer and checked it in order to get credit for that. And then finally, we got the new stuff. This is dealing with rational exponents. We're going to start off by doing some converting. And here we've got to convert from radical to rational exponent form. Uh, what I'd like to remind you is that this is going to be the numerator. Uh, I'm not going to use n for that because I use n for the index. Um, so whatever I end up on the inside, we'll talk about that in a second. We're going to have a fraction here. 6 is going to be that numerator. The index is the denominator, and the stuff on the inside is always going to be that base. Uh, that's it for this problem. All you're doing is converting that. Uh, for number 16, we're going backwards, and we got a couple things we got to be aware of. Uh, the first is that this is going to be some kind of a radical, and that the inside is going to be inside this radical as well. Uh, and actually, I'm going to take a step back to talk about this for a second, you need these parentheses. If you do not have these parentheses, the 6 over 5 only goes with the x, uh, so you need the parentheses around that whole thing. Going backwards, we tend to not have that issue as much, uh, depending on how you write this, because we have the radical that acts as a grouping symbol for us. Uh, we know that the numerator here becomes the power here. If you put this on the outside, you don't have to worry about parentheses. The denominator here becomes the index here. Uh, denominator of 2 means that this would be an index of 2. However, 2 would be a square root. So we've got 2p to the 3. Uh, and when we do that, you're good. Uh, you could also leave it with the index there. It doesn't really matter for square roots. Uh, for the next one, number 18, 
we got to reduce this radical expression. And when we do this, I'm going to factor the beginning part uh, into everything that I can multiply to get to 18. I know that's going to be 3 times 6, but 6 could be 3 times 2. And I also know x squared is x times x. What this tells me is I've got a pair of 3's. The square root of 3 times 3 would just be 3 out front. I've got a pair of x's. Since we know these are positive, we can just pull one of these out. And I'm left with 2 on the inside because that's what's left over. Uh, alternatively, if you happen to see this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared, you get 3 times the square root of 2 times x, which is 3x square roots of 2. You get the same uh, value either way you do this. And then number 21. We've got 216 equals p minus 23 all to the 3 over 2. Um, we've already got the weird thing by itself, so what we're going to have to do is to rewrite this as a radical. So we get 216 is equal to, that tells me we got a square root of p minus 23, and that's going to be to the third power. Okay, I'm going to undo this by taking the third root of both sides. Third root of 216 is going to be 6. So we get 6 is equal to p minus 23. We're going to square both sides. And that gives us 36 is equal to p minus 23. I'm going to add 23 to both sides and get 59 is equal to p. And that's it.